Hey guys, welcome back to another Whiteboard Farm Science with the High Mountain Homestead. I am thrilled to be talking to you about the ruminant digestive system and why that's so important because, spoiler alert, ruminants are actually superheroes. If you're new to the channel, we are homesteading operations that are all about better soil, better plants, and better animals, and the ruminant system accomplishes all three of those. Maybe more than any other video we've shot. So stay tuned, keep watching. We're gonna be talking about uh, the ruminant digestive system and how that actually helps uh, improve pretty much everything. Do you remember in school, or maybe your mom said it to you one time, that cows have four stomachs? Uh, they don't. They have one stomach, but they do have four chambers within their stomach. And so today we're gonna to be going through those four chambers uh, within a ruminant, uh, which is an animal that, that has one of these. So the typical ruminants uh, that you're familiar with are gonna be cows, uh, sheep, goats. Uh, those are gonna be pretty much uh, the, the typical ruminants. Uh, you can see I've got a sheep drawn here. My wife drew that sheep, looks pretty good. Uh, we raise sheep, uh, but this applies to, to pretty much any core ruminant, you know, like a cow. Okay, and sometimes I will be talking about cows here, just because there's more information online about cows that help feed my research. But, same thing goes for sheep, okay? Before I dive into the actual stomachs, let me talk about um, why, why they have this, or like uh, what we can observe from the outside. So, um, if, you, if you keep sheep, if you keep cattle, if you keep uh, any kind of ruminant, or if, you, or if you've seen any ruminant out there, um, you know that they spend a lot of time of the day doing one of these two things. They're either grazing or they're sitting down, which is actually a digestion process for them, ruminating. Or chewing the cud is another way to think about that. Their days are actually spent uh, pretty much in equal thirds if they're on open pasture one-third of the time grazing, one-third of the time ruminating or chewing the cud, and the other third of the time is, uh, I don't know, leisure time. Uh, they're doing whatever they want to do, which is usually sitting down or walking around. But um, that's a pretty good way to think of their days. One-third grazing, one-third chewing the cud, and one-third uh, doing whatever, whatever they want to do. Sky's the limit. I guess the fence is the limit, because they can't go beyond the fences. Okay, so they spend a lot of their time eating. What does it actually look like? Well, they're eating very, very quickly. And so a cow statistic is cows take 25 to 40,000 bites of forage every single day, okay? 40,000 bites a day. That is incredible. I can't even think about eating that much. I feel like my jaw would get so tired. Um, which brings me to another point is, uh, that's interesting to ruminant is how their their jaw actually works. So they don't have teeth on the top and the bottom and the front. Um, they have teeth and then a pad. And so they have this dental pad on the top and these teeth that basically come up, let's pretend this is a dental pad, and they grind along that top pad. Um, which is why if you see like a cow eating, we eat top to bottom, you know, but a cow kind of does that exaggerated, I'll look really stupid doing this, but like that, you know what I mean? Like when the cows kind of, did you like that moo sound that I made, by the way? Um, that's the sound, that's what cows are, and sheep are doing, is they're, they're grinding that food along that, along that top pad. So, like I said, they're eating incredibly fast. And when they eat, basically they're shoving all of it into our first, and arguably the most unique and important stomach chamber, the rumen. Now in an adult ruminant, the rumen occupies about uh, 80 to 85 percent of the entire stomach chamber. So this isn't necessarily drawn to scale, but uh, it helps you understand everything that's going on. But the rumen is vitally important because they are shoveling down that forage, that, that grass, even the weeds that they're eating, they shovel it down in their mouth. That's what they're doing. And then as they're walking around, it shifts in the rumen, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what's happening in that shift, um, but it shifts within there, okay? Okay, so they eat the food incredibly quickly, it goes into the rumen, and then what happens? Well, 
this is a third part of their day. What's the other third part of their day? So it's this ruminating process. It's the chewing the cud process. So um, this you is sitting down and she's basically doing that, doing that thing where they're they're chewing the cud. What actually is chewing the cud? Well, not to be gross, but they're throwing stuff up. Uh, they're, uh, it's not a vomit like you and I would have. It's not acidic because we'll get to that, but the pH system in their rumen is basically like water. Um, it's around six and a half, which water is seven on the pH system. So very neutral uh, acidity level within the rumen. And they're just kind of uh, uh, regurgitating, that's a better word for it, uh, than throwing up. They're regurgitating the fibrous parts of what they've eaten. And they are chewing it again. Now, as they're chewing it again, they're breaking it down into smaller parts, but their saliva is coming in and it's helping uh, with the enzymes in the saliva, it's helping break down those, uh, the plants basically that they've been eating um, and helping digest that. Okay, so what is digestible by the saliva, or what the saliva, saliva yields into a digestible substance goes uh, back down into the, into the esophagus. So you can see here, there's kind of two pathways into the rumen and the reticulum. So what's digestible by the saliva goes right down into the reticulum. And the reticulum really is just a lower chamber within the larger rumen. Actually, a lot of people refer to it as the reticular rumen, okay? So think of the rumen and the reticulum as their buddies. They're basically uh, the, same, uh, uh, the same thing. The only thing that separates them is um, on the reticulum, you basically have this muscle that kind of just lets stuff in and lets stuff out, right? And so if it's, if it's a fibrous thing, so let's say this girl's been chewing on a lot of grass, most of that grass is not digestible straight to the reticulum. So it goes back into the rumen. And what it does is it basically sits on the bottom um, and kind of just forms this fibrous mat. And what happens in that mat is where all the magic happens. That's where you have this beautiful microbiome of, of these uh, bacteria basically, that are, that are constantly eating and helping in that digestion process. And so that's one of the superpowers of these ruminant animals. So um, if you keep chickens, if you keep pigs, you should be fermenting their food, right? Um, so a lot of times, like with our chickens, we're, we're soaking grains and we're fermenting the grains and maybe even sprouting the grains. Um, that, that helps them because they don't have a stomach that can do that. And if you didn't know, humans don't either. Okay, so these ruminants are able to basically have this awesome, uh, in the rumen and the reticulum, this biome here that helps in the digestion process. This is also where bloat would come into play. So if you feed them something that's maybe too rich or not really for their system, that bacteria it could, it could have the potential to um, essentially overpopulate, reproduce too fast, pass too much gas, um, and bloat the ruminant and, and literally you know blow up their stomach. So that's what bloat is. Uh, really sad thing, but if you're feeding your animals what they're supposed to be eating, it's not really a problem. Okay, so what's actually happening in the rumen? Well, I've talked about the, the enzymes aiding in, uh, sorry, not the enzymes, the bacteria aiding in digestion here. Here's something else that is incredibly cool. Okay, so about 50, to 55% of all the starch and sugars, they're digested right here, okay? So they are, bam, transferred into energy uh, very, very quickly on a relative scale. However, it's important to note that the rumen itself um, you, is usually holding grass and forage in there for about 48 hours, so for two days. So within that two-day process, they're basically piling on new and letting the old digest and and pass down into the reticulum. Okay, we're gonna to go to the reticulum in a second, but I wanna talk about one really cool thing with the rumen. The rumen also helps digest protein. And you're like, okay, well they're eating grass, so how much protein is in that? Um, you know, not, not much. Uh, in a good alfalfa, which is probably one of the more rich uh, forage, protein, forage for proteins, um, you know, 12% is, is a lot of protein there. So they're not getting as much protein as you and I are, or even pigs or chickens, um, but they are getting some. 
And here's something else that is incredibly cool, okay? So they're not only getting protein from the stuff they eat, but remember that bacteria in there? Bacteria is basically very small bugs. Bugs are full of protein. They're, they're another animal, basically. So as those bugs live and die within that system, yes, they get passed on and digested as well into protein. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, we've talked about the rumen. Rumen's my favorite stomach chamber, but let's go to the reticulum. The reticulum, again, part of the reticular rumen uh, organ, is just the lower part of that separated by a muscle. The reticulum is basically where, go back to the start of our story, where she's uh, regurgitating cud, mixing it with saliva. Most of it goes back into the rumen, but some of it is ready just for straight up digestion right now. That goes to the reticulum. That is combined with the stuff that's been sitting inside the rumen for 48 hours that is now broken up enough to start cycling down, uh, going through the sheep for further digestion. So since the reticulum is part of the rumen, the, the reticular rumen is essentially one organ, what makes them different? Well, the reticulum right here is actually, um, when you look at what this looks like inside the organ, it's a, it's, it's a honeycombed looking uh, compartment within the room. And so it's honeycombed because the big stuff needs to stay up top and the small stuff can pass through. So it's basically an intricate filter that allows things, it, it, it aids in a little bit more fermentation down there and allows it to pass to the next stage, which is the omassum. The omassum is a fascinating area, okay? It's actually the small side of all of these organs. It's been enlarged here to kind of show you whereabouts it would be. But the omassum is, the, it, it's known as uh, the butcher's Bible. And uh, it's not because it holds some profound truth, but just because when a butcher uh, is, you know, getting rid of it or, or uh, when they're eviscerating a ruminant, um, it's very finely, uh, layered and a, and so it looks like a, a page like a bunch of pages right you know the Bible has those very thin pages right so um, that's why they call the Amass and the butcher's Bible is because that's how they can find it, it it's very uh, uh, intricately thinned uh, with folds now why is that well it's such a small organ that um, but it's so important because this is where so much nutrition is absorbed into the body and so all of these thin folds that the water, the saliva, and all those little particles are passing through, that's essentially where, where nutrition is absorbed. And so all those little folds extend the surface area that they're allowed to pull nutrition from. So a uh, very small spot uh, within, the, within the rumen system, um, but absolutely critical because that's where it's pulling out a lot of nutrition and energy for the ruminant animal to start using. Once the food and the particles pass from the uh, omassum, it goes to the abomassum, and that's called the true stomach. The reason it's called the true stomach is because it's very similar to your stomach and my stomach. It is very acidic, and the uh, high acidity level allows the food, you know, anything else that's left over, it gets zapped in the, uh, and digested in the abomassum, okay? So, uh, the abomassum is basically the last stop. So if you picture it, the pH in the rumen and the reticulum, very similar to water, okay, not very acidic. Um, as it goes to the omassum, a lot of the water gets pulled out of it. So basically anything that's left after that um, is getting just its final digestion within the abomassum, okay? So to put that in perspective as far as acidity, human stomach have an acidity level of 1.5 to about 2, okay? So um, the lower on the acidity scale, the, uh, the more acidic it is, right? Whereas a, the abomassum is closer to like 2.5 to 3, okay? So different, not that different, but you can see compared to like the uh, 6.5 that the rumen is, 2.5 in the abomassum very acidic, right? That's why it's called the true stomach. All right, and the part we all know and love, after the abomassum, it goes to the intestines. Um, the intestines are where the pH system, or the pH levels, are uh, flushed back to a, a less acidic level, and enzymes are reintroduced into whatever's less, okay? Um, 
this is where the poop gets made. <laughs> and so the enzymes are put, injected back into it at a safe level. And basically, um, after the intestines, where we get that awesome probiotic for the soil, uh, which we call manure, right? So why is this important? Like, why does this actually matter? I care more about this than I do my own biology. Um, and, and maybe that's wrong, I don't know, but like to me, this is absolutely fascinating and critical to understand because humans and ruminants are different from each other. We don't have this superpower that they do, okay? So the point is that I'm trying to get across in, in a video like this is that they have this microbiome here that is producing this awesome uh, system that gets passed into the soil. The ruminant animal is one of the most core elements to actually providing a, an agricultural system that is not dependent on fertilizers, is not dependent on pesticides, it's something that allows us to actually create topsoil right here, okay? That's, that's where topsoil is made, that's where crops get their nutrition, and humans can't do that. We do not possess the system. Pigs don't do it. Chickens don't do it. Okay? These guys. Ruminants. They're the real heroes. Okay? So I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope it was educational, maybe even a little inspirational about why ruminants are so awesome. I have one more uh, little factoid for you about this uh, that I'll share right after this. But I do want to thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, click the, I guess it'll be over there, click or over there, I don't know. Click, it's down. Click the subscribe button, okay? Um, it, it goes a long way to help me out. Okay, here's the last little factoid. So we've got the rumen and we've got the abomasum, right? The abomasum is more of the true stomach. And what's interesting is when calves and lambs are newborns, their abomasum is actually the largest part of their stomach chamber. And you think to yourself, hmm, why is that? Well, nature, who's always a step ahead, created this system where the abomasum, which is more like our stomach, is essential for a young ruminant's life. What are they eating when they're young? They're eating milk, okay? Um, that's why milk is appropriate for these, for these younger animals, is because the abomasum, which is very similar to our stomach, and we can drink milk for the most part. Um, <laughs> definitely kids can drink milk. Some of us have problems with milk as we get older. No judgment. Um, but the, the abomasum is basically a place where, um, where milk can be digested. That's why it's bigger. And as the animal matures, um, I'm not sure if the abomasum shrinks necessarily, but the rumen develops. And so the grass and forage that, uh, that little lamb, that little kid, that little calf uh, will be eating as it, he or she grows older, bam. Now it's doing its thing in the rumen. Hey, thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video. The abomasum is what's known as the true stomach. And the reason why it's called the true stomach is because it's very similar to, to yours and mine. Unless you're a cow watching this video, then um, cut that joke out. That's a dumb joke. <laughs>